wondering why is this section even important? Like why do I need to know psychology and sociology to be a doctor? You're not alone. I would just say that here. You're not alone. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel if you are a returning subscriber and welcome to my channel if you are a new subscriber. My name is Aaliyah Mead. I am a rising first year medical student. In today's video, I'm gonna be dropping some proven keys to success that you can start using today to maximize your MCAT score before you take the real thing. Now, to ensure that you don't miss out on this information, go ahead, get comfortable, get some pen and paper, and let's get into it. We first need to break this thing down. I wanna make sure that everybody watching understands the overview of the exam. It's important to know what you're facing before you actually step up to the challenge and take this exam. So the medical college admissions test is an entrance exam created by the double AMC or the Association of American Medical Colleges. This exam tests you on the wide breadth of knowledge that you're expected to know as a rising medical student. They have four sections in this exam. The first section is the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems. This section is going to test you on your knowledge about biology and biochemistry. The next section you'll encounter is the critical analysis and reasoning skills section of the MCAT. The critical analysis and reasoning skills section is actually a section where they will throw new information at you in the form of long passages and ask questions afterwards to test your ability to critically think and analyze new information. That's a key skill to have as a rising medical professional. The next section is going to be your chemical and physical foundations of living system. This section is going to see what you know about chemistry and physics. Last but not least, the psychological, sociological, and biological foundations of human behavior, also called the psych social section of the MCAT. This section of the MCAT is going to test you on your fundamental knowledge about psychology and sociology. Now that we're done with our quick overview of the MCAT sections, let's jump into those keys that you need to maximize your MCAT score. The first thing you're going to have to do is close out your content review. Let me say it again. Close out your content review. I promise you that if you navigate your study plan and you do not ensure that you have covered all the content that is tested on the MCAT, you will have a difficult time reaching that score that you wish to have. So it is important that you not only take the prerequisite courses to get into medical school, but that you have a great handle on the knowledge that's presented in the following courses. Biology 101 and 102, General Chemistry 1 and 2, Biochemistry 1, Biochemistry 1. Physics 1 and 2, Organic Chemistry 1 and 2, Psychology and Sociology. Those are the key subject areas that you want to make sure you have a wonderful understanding of before getting too deep into your study plan for your MCAT. The next step that you're going to want to ensure that you take to maximize your score on your MCAT is to review your information and do high yield practice. High yield practicing is using those topics and subtopics that the MCAT most readily and historically test students on. So for example, when you're talking about the biology section of the MCAT, they're not gonna ask you 20 questions out of 40 about evolution. They are most likely gonna ask you more things about the cell and its individual parts or the phospholipid bilayer, for example. They're gonna ask you things that they specifically want to test for. So what you can do during your study process is really hone in on these areas that are high yield. Now, for those of you who do not have access to materials that can tell you what are high yield topics for the MCAT and what are not, I'm going to include some information in the description below where you can find a, a Google file that I'll type out for you guys and it'll make a list of high yield topics for each section of the MCAT. So check that out if you need it. If you don't, it's also fine as well. It's there for your use. Okay, so the next key that you need in order to maximize your score on your MCAT is going to be uninterrupted practice full lengths. 
I know a lot of y'all don't like to practice. And let's be honest, nobody likes to sit through hours of testing. However, it is important that if you are taking your MCAT, you get as many reps of actually taking that MCAT before you sit down and take the real thing. Like an athlete who has to practice their technique and their form, they practice it so many times that when it's time to actually perform, they can perform at their best with minimal effort. It's very important that you sit through uninterrupted practice tests that most closely mimic the testing environment because you want to ensure or guarantee that your body can physically, mentally, and emotionally sit through this very long exam. Also, taking those practice tests provides you with enough testing data to be able to track your trends on your scores. It's also going to provide you with a breakdown of how you're performing on each section so that you can customize your approach during your study session to particular topics and subtopics that you are repeatedly not doing well on. I highly recommend taking at least seven to nine practice full lengths. The MCAT exam is honestly no different from those exams that you take in college. So your average biochemistry exam, when you look at the MCAT and you do the bio biochem section, the questions are really honestly the same, if not easier, because it's not even free response. It's all multiple choice. The difficulty comes when you have to sit through a test for five hours and 45 minutes or seven and a half hours, and you have to be at your best for that long. It is not only mentally draining, and emotionally draining, it's physically exhausting. So you do want to get as many reps in of the test before you sit down and take your full one. Okay, so the next key portion of your MCAT prep is going to be naming and aiming. Naming and aiming is you taking the time to go back to your practice full lengths and breaking down your test data. You're gonna walk yourself through your test data and make a spreadsheet. Within that spreadsheet, you do need to have some fundamental pieces that will help you in your naming and aiming process. One of the first pieces that you wanna include on your spreadsheet is a question number section. So you can write down the question numbers of those questions that you missed on that particular exam. The next thing you're gonna do is name the topics and subtopics of the particular questions that you missed. The next area that you wanna include on your spreadsheet is the portion where you actually copy and paste the question into the spreadsheet. So it's there for your recollection as you come back to it. Then you're gonna to wanna to add the answer that you provided and the answer that was correct. This is very important because as you go back and study this information or even while you're actively performing the naming and aiming process you're able to see exactly what questions you got wrong what you answered and how it was supposed to be answered to get it correct last but not least a nice column within your spreadsheet for you to type a couple of words or a couple of key sentences about why was the correct answer the correct answer and then give some thought as to why you answered the question the way you did you will find that during this process you are going to actually understand the information a lot better because it will correct the way that you were thinking as you were taking your exam. That is going to be your naming and aiming process. The aiming portion of the process leads us to our next step in your MCAT prep. So the next step is going to be connected to our last key. You want to focus your content review at the later portions of your MCAT prep toward those topics that you named during your naming and aiming process. This is a proven technique that will ensure that any gaps in your understanding of those basic foundational sciences is covered and that you've practiced them well enough to ensure that if they come up on your MCAT, you can pass those questions with no problem. Okay, so the final tip to maximize your score on your MCAT is going to be you have to think happy thoughts. Happy thoughts or a positive mindset is going to decrease your test anxiety and it's going to ensure that you are emotionally and mentally prepared to take your MCAT and do your best. One of the ways that I stayed positive was to constantly visualize myself succeeding and achieving my target score on my MCAT. You do want to couple your happy thoughts with healthy coping mechanisms. So if you finish a day of MCAT study and it's very heavy, give yourself a break at the end of your day by doing something that you like. A lot of times we get into the habit of just doing what we know works and studying our books and practicing our questions. We forget about how we feel and how we are thinking about our performance. So it's so critically important that you not only think happy thoughts but also couple that positive mindset with healthy coping mechanisms and a healthy lifestyle during your study process. All right guys that pretty much concludes today's video on keys to maximizing your MCAT score. Here they are 
are once more for your convenience in order of how we covered them. Now, I hope that you guys enjoyed my video. Before you return back to your study plan, I wanna thank you for taking some time out to learn what you can do to maximize your MCAT score. Subscribe if you haven't already, turn on your post notifications so you never miss another video like this one, and share this video if you think it could be helpful for any of your friends or family members to ensure that we are all out here maximizing our MCAT score when we go and we take our MCAT exam. If there was anything in this video that was helpful, or any questions that you may have, regarding how to do well on your MCAT, feel free to drop a comment below and I will promptly respond back to you. I wish you guys the best on your MCAT exam. Go knock it out of the park. Bye.